you want impartial jurors who are going to be fair and reasonable. I don't think you want jurors, though, that have not heard of Alex Murdoch at all. People are going to know who Alex Murdoch is, but you want people that are going to be thoughtful and give both sides the opportunity to present their cases and then deliberate as instructed by the judge. Eric Bland represented Alex Murdoch's former housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield's family in court. He won millions of dollars for the Satterfield estate. He says he believes financial pressure is what led to the deaths of Maggie and Paul Murdoch. Pressure breaks pipes or pressure break makes diamonds. Didn't see any bling bling, so the state's gonna argue it broke the pipe. Travel around 30 miles west from the courthouse and you'll be in the rural community of Islington, where investigators found the bodies of Maggie and Paul Murdoch at the family hunting lodge. What a jury will have to decide is whether Alex Murdoch, husband and father, is responsible for their deaths. You know, as a citizen, I want good proof. You know, I think Alex Murdoch is a despicable person. I think he's a horrible uh, human being. He's a bad father. Uh, obviously, he hasn't been good to his family. He stole from his law firm. He stole from his friends. He stole from his family and his clients. So from that standpoint, I think he's despicable. But I want good proof. Bland may be called forward as a witness by the prosecution. However, he believes the defense has a slight advantage heading into the trial due to the presence of attorney Dick Harputlian. And he's tried 100 murder cases, so he knows how to sow reasonable doubt. I think Creighton Waters is a great representative of our state. I think he's dogged and tenacious, but um, I don't know if he has the level of experience to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dick Harputlian. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. I'm not prescient, prescient but uh, I suspected coming into this that we could get a jury in two, two days, two and a half days, and it looks like that's where we're going to end up. Tuesday afternoon consisted of a pretrial motion hearing where the prosecution and state discussed with Judge Clifton Newman what evidence they wanted to include or exclude. If the judge determines to exclude that evidence, not only does it knock out a bunch of witnesses, which reduces the time to try this case, but that's a big hit for the prosecution. One big piece of evidence the state hopes to present is blood spatter evidence. The two sides decided to postpone the discussion about whether this evidence is allowed until it is relevant at trial. And what we had agreed to is once we get to that part of the case, if they decide to call Mr. Bevel, then we'd have to have a hearing on Mr. Bevel. And then we'd also, whenever they call Mr. Kenzie, if they intend to offer spatter opinion testimony, we need a counsel hearing for that. The state also wants to call a ballistics expert to the witness stand to testify that casings found around Maggie Murdoch's body are believed to match other casings found on the Murdoch's Islandton property. We believe uh, substantial evidence shows that that is uh, um, that they are from a 300 blackout AR style rifle uh, that was purchased by Alec Murdoch and can no longer be accounted for. Having worked with attorney Dick Harputlian before, lawyer Joe McCullough believes the defense's best argument could be sowing reasonable doubt in the minds of the jurors. Dick is a great lawyer and Dick is my former law partner, so I say that having tried cases against him uh, since we were partners and before that uh, with him, he is an, uh, highly skilled at prosecuting and defending murder cases and death penalty cases. McCullough himself is split on whether he believes that former attorney Alex Murdoch is responsible for his wife and son's deaths. I have no idea whether Alec Murdoch did this or whether he is capable of it. I have come to believe over the last 45, 46 years that people in the worst situations, perhaps because of substance abuse, are capable of almost anything. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. A perfect storm that was gathering, much like the storms that are coming outside today. Listen to that gathering storm that all came to a head on June 7th, 2021, the day the evidence will show he killed Maggie and Paul. Some of that evidence prosecuting attorney Creighton Waters is speaking of includes a firearm used in the crime. The cases that were found in that fire bed, flower bed and the cases that were found across the street at that range were ejected out of the same weapon that fired all the cases that were around Maggie's dead body. In his opening statement, Waters also mentioned other pieces of evidence, including gunshot residue and cell phone data. Despite what he told people, I was never at the kennels, the cell phones are going to show otherwise. Alex Murdoch's attorney, Dick Harpulian, disagreed that cell phone data proves that his client is guilty. Now, the cell phone records, and you're going to hear this from their own experts, are incomplete. What you have heard from the attorney general as facts are not, are not. They're his theories, 
his conjecture. The defense attorney also said that Murdoch had no motive to kill his wife or son. You're not going to hear a single witness say that their relationship, Maggie and Alex's relationship, were anything other than loving. And the defense also disputed another piece of evidence, blood spatter allegedly found on a shirt worn by Alex Murdoch. There's no blood on him. They didn't find any blood on him. Sled's testing indicated 12 different places on his shirt and pants. No human blood detected. Period. After opening statements, court adjourned Wednesday afternoon before 5 o'clock and were resumed Thursday morning at 9.30. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. After receiving the 911 call, Colleton County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Daniel Green says it took him 20 minutes to get out to the Murdoch property. Upon arriving, Green discovered the bodies of Maggie and Paul, as well as a distraught Alex Murdoch, who told him he had a shotgun on him. I spoke with him for a few more minutes, and just based off of how nervous he was acting and, and anxious and upset, I decided it was in everyone's best interest to get that shotgun and secure it in my vehicle so that no one else had access to it. Green says that before he even asked, Murdoch told him he knew a possible motive for Maggie and Paul's murders. This is a long story. My son was in a boat wreck a, a few months back. He's been getting threats. Most of it's been benign stuff we didn't take serious. Okay. Um, you know, he, he's been getting, like, punched. <laughs> um, I, know that's somebody, I know that's what it is. Murdoch claims to not have been at the Islington property at the time Maggie and Paul were shot. My mom has late stages Alzheimer's and my dad is in the hospital. Okay. I left. I don't know what time. I can go back on my phone and tell you the exact times. Did you check? Okay. Did I check what? Did you check them? The, the, we got medical guys that are, that, that's, that's, that's what they're going to do, okay? Uh, what are they doing? Can they hurry? They are. Yes, sir. That, that gentleman that was out here already, he's one of the battalion chiefs, okay? Sergeant Green says he noticed something he found suspicious in the driveway of the Murdoch property. Multiple tire tracks. It caught my eye. And why did it catch your eye? It just seemed odd that there were, it appeared to be that many sets of tire tracks since he said he'd pulled up, went to the house and came back. It just appeared that there were more than just that. It appeared that there were more tracks than just that. That's correct. Thursday's final witness also testified about the tire tracks. Colleton County Deputy Jason Chapman said that when investigators went near them, Alex Murdoch's demeanor changed. Friday morning court will resume again at 930. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. He took a nap. Did he say where he went after that? To check on his uh, mother with Alzheimer's in Hampton. Colleton County Sheriff's Office Detective Laura Rutland says that Murdoch's story about going to check on his mother sounded odd to her, to which the defense responded. Mr. Randolph Murdoch had just been put in the hospital that very day. That's correct. And that it was an unusual day because Mr. Randolph Murdoch was not with Ms. Libby Randolph, and she gets anxious when that occurs. You remember that? I remember him saying okay. something along those lines. Both the state and defense testified that law enforcement did not see any blood on Alex Murdoch at the scene. The state believes that Murdoch must be lying since he told the detective the night of the murders that he tried to move Paul's body. Prosecutors say he could not have done this without getting blood on himself. Whether you're this way or this way, right? Correct. Right. Either underneath or under here. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? The defense argues that the lack of blood on Murdoch proves that he was not present when his wife and son were shot. He was clean, correct? To my visual eye, he was clean, yes. And to your visual eye, it did not look like he had just blown his son's head off in the confines of a feed room where splatters everywhere. Isn't that correct? I didn't say that. Rutland suggested her own theory as to why she did not see any blood on Murdoch the night of June 7th, 2021. Did he look like somebody who just changed his clothes? Yes. And Alex Murdoch also told Detective Rutland the same thing he had told other first responders about why he believes someone would want Maggie and Paul dead. What comes to my mind is my son Paul was in a boat wreck uh, a couple years ago and there's been a you know, he was charged with being uh, arrested for being the driver. There's been a lot of negative publicity about that. And there's been a lot of 
people online just really vile stuff, but he's been punched and hit and just attacked a lot. Judge Clifton Newman wrapped up court around 4.30 on Friday. The trial will resume Monday morning at 9.30. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. One of the bloody footprints in that feed room was not Paul, not the perpetrator. It was a police officer. Yes. Probably a Carlton County police officer. I don't know that for sure. Who else could it be? It could have been one of us. From one Sled. of yours? I don't Order. think it was mine, but it could have been from Sled. I don't know. In addition to mentioning the footprint, Harputlian also stated that the evidence Worley presented supports the theory that there were two shooters. But doesn't this indicate to you there were two shooters? There was a shooter up here and a shooter down here? Is it a possibility? Well, let me say this. Is it a possibility that there are two shooters based on the data you collected? I, it just indicated it was, there was movement between. The second witness of the day was SLED agent Jeff Croft. Croft spoke to Paul Murdoch's friend, Rogan Gibson. Gibson's phone showed he tried multiple times to call Paul and even texted Maggie. And Rogan sends her a text, is that correct? Yes, sir, he does. What time does he send that text? 9.34 p.m. And what does he say? Tell Paul to call me. Croft also testified Monday afternoon about weapons found on the Murdoch's Islandton property. Did you ever find any other weapons on Alec Murdoch's property that could shoot 300 blackouts other than that one that was in the gun rack? No, sir, we did not. We're going to talk more about this in a minute, but did you find some 12 gauges? Yes, sir, we did. The defense objected to the guns being presented as evidence. Unless they have evidence tying it to the murders, I mean, there are a lot of guns that were seized, Your Honor. Judge Thumbrose. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Clifton Newman adjourned court just after 5 on Monday. Tuesday, we'll begin with the cross-examination of Agent Croft. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. <laughs> it's just so bad. They did it so bad. <laughs> did you hear now, they or I? I will still testify that my hearing, I hear I. Defense attorney Jim Griffin asked SLED agent Jeff Croft why he didn't question Alex Murdoch's statement further if he found it suspicious. Griffin also asked Croft why investigators did not check out Alex Murdoch's mother's house, which is where Alex said he was at the time of the murders. Did anybody at SLED ever on the morning of the 8th hightail it over to Alameda and search the house for any evidence whatsoever? I did not go to Almeida and search the house. The defense also argued that the investigation singled out Alex Murdoch as the only possible suspect, to which the state disagreed. And was the investigation just fo focused on Alec Murdoch, or was it focused on anyone and everyone it could focus on? It was absolutely not just focused on Alex Murdoch. Despite Croft testifying to firearm evidence, the defense argued that the firearms seized from the Murdoch's Islandton property were not used in the crime. Have you ever found the murder weapons? Do you know? <clears throat> Objection, Your Honor. That's outside the scope of his knowledge. Objection's overruled. Not that I'm aware of, sir. After the defense finished cross-examination, the state presented three witnesses who testified to cell phone records, including the agent that unlocked Paul Murdoch's phone. I entered a, a number that uh, successfully unlocked the phone rather quickly. Okay. And what was that number associated with? I believe the number was associated with the date of birth of Paul Murdoch. Court adjourned around 5.30 on Tuesday. The last witness we heard from was SLED Lieutenant Britt Dove, who testified about the final calls and messages sent and received by Maggie Murdoch's cell phone. Court resumed Wednesday at 9.30. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. The texts from Megan were read at 8.48.59. And Rogan's text arrives at 849.35. Approximately 36 seconds. Okay. <clears throat> what is this text from Rogan ever read on Paul's phone? No, sir. It shows the status is unread. This was not the only evidence taken from Paul's phone. The state also presented a Snapchat video believed to have been taken at 844, not long before Paul and his mother were killed. On that video, Dove testified to hearing three voices. Hey, he's got a bird in his mouth. 
There's a chicken. As for Maggie's phone, law enforcement agents testified that it was found about a half mile away from the Murdoch's property. In their cross-examination, the defense proposed a theory of Maggie's phone being thrown out of a getaway vehicle that an unknown killer was driving. It would be reasonable that if somebody had taken the phone, they see it starts to ring with his name on it, they might chuck it out the window. It is possible if they see that, yes. That would be consistent with all the information on the, the cell phones, would it not? The defense also argued that the cell phone data proves that Alex Murdoch could not have been the person who threw Maggie's phone out of a moving vehicle window since his cell phone places him elsewhere. The person who had Alex Murdoch's phone was walking at this 906 and 12 seconds time because it's recording steps. Yes, sir. Time. Somebody was holding the phone and recording and steps. And he's also calling his wife at the, in this time period. Yes, sir. There are phone calls. Wednesday ended with two of Paul Murdoch's friends taking the stand before court adjourned around 545. The trial will resume tomorrow at 930. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Is it your understanding that uh, Paul Murdoch was charged? Yes. Is it your understanding that Alec Murdoch was civilly sued? Yes. And there was ongoing civil litigation at the time Paul and Maggie were murdered? That's correct. Not only did Seconder know about Alec Murdoch's financial troubles, she also suspected that Alec had been misusing their law firm's funds. She confronted him about this on June 7, 2021. And did y'all get to conclude that conversation or just something interrupted? We did not. He took a phone call in the middle of that conversation. That phone call was about his father that was in, who was in the hospital, that he was going to be terminal, and that there was nothing else they'd be able to do for his father. The night of June 7, 2021, Maggie and Paul Murdoch were killed. Later in September, Alec Murdoch's colleagues believed they had proof that Murdoch had been misusing millions of dollars owed to his law firm or the firm's clients. Did they confront him with this information? They did, and it is my understanding that Alec admitted it and that it was determined he would resign. But will the jury ever hear any of this testimony about Alec Murdoch's financial problems? The defense argued they should not. 403 also includes a component of undue delay. And as he just described, all the financial misdeeds or crimes that he wants to prove up, we're going to be here until end of February, I suspect, or March, because that's adding two weeks to this trial. The state responded that Murdoch's financial problems were relevant to the case and should be presented as evidence to the jury. The defense asked the question, can you think of any reason and all of this going on in his life, which is a stellar series of events like nothing ever seen, is it certainly relevant for the jury to consider when they consider a perfect storm that was arriving for this man on June the 7th. Ultimately, Judge Clifton Newman did not make a decision about whether to allow the financial information to be presented at trial. He did call the jury back in after lunch as they heard more from the state's witnesses. The court adjourned at 4 o'clock today and will resume tomorrow at 1130. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Despite what he told people, I was never at those kennels, the cell phones are going to show otherwise. And a cell phone video investigators found on Paul Murdoch's phone places Alec at the crime scene just minutes before the murders, according to the state. It's a guinea. There's a chicken. Come here, Come here, Cash. Come here, Bob. Cash. Despite firearm evidence being submitted, the defense argues that much of it is irrelevant. Have you ever found the murder weapons? Not that I'm aware of, sir. The defense also accused the state investigation of only looking at Alec Murdoch as a possible suspect. It was absolutely not just focused on Alec Murdoch. Investigators from the crime scene testified about not finding any blood on Alec Murdoch's clothes. Did he look like somebody who just changed his clothes? Yes. Objection, no human blood detected, period. What you have heard from the attorney general as facts are not or not. They're his theories. As far as theories, Alec Murdoch told investigators his own theory about why his wife and son were shot. This is a long story. My son was in a boat wreck a, a few months back. He's been getting threats. The state hopes to present evidence about Murdoch's financial situation to the jury. Judge Clifton Newman held a hearing without the jury present as the state brought witnesses up Thursday and Friday. It's fair to say that of June of 2021 and the months after the indebtedness to 
Palmetto State Bank from Alec Murdoch was very, very large. Yes, sir. One of those witnesses was the CFO of the law firm that Alec Murdoch was a part of and allegedly stole millions of dollars from. It is my understanding that Alec admitted it and that it was determined he would resign. Judge Newman has yet to rule whether the jury will hear the financial evidence, evidence the defense hopes to keep from being included. We're going to be here until end of February, I suspect, or March. The jury was brought back in Friday afternoon until court adjourned around 5.30. The trial will resume Monday morning at 9.30. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. I think Alec um, was successful more off, not from his work ethic, but from his ability to establish relationships and to, to manipulate people into settlements and clients into liking him. Alex Murdoch's former co-worker, Gene Seconder, says Alec misused millions of dollars belonging to their law firm and its clients. My discovery of things started coming to a head in May of 21. However, Seconder says that her inquiry into Alec's alleged financial crimes stopped temporarily after the death of Maggie and Paul. He wasn't working a whole lot. He was um, erratic. We knew he was taking pills. Um, we were just worried about his sanity, so we weren't going to go in there and harass him about money. When she did look closer, Seconder says she discovered that Alec had been writing checks owed to the law firm to himself instead. As everyone came out, I started noticing it more and more, and I was sick, the sickest feeling you could feel in the world. I knew that he was stealing all this money. Seconder says she took this information to others in the law firm, and the partners had a conversation with Alec. Seconder testified that Alec admitted to the financial crimes and was forced to resign from the law firm PMPED, which has now been renamed the Parker Law Group. Did you really know Alec Murdoch? I don't think I ever really knew him. I don't think anybody knows him. Thank you. Nothing further. While the state has suggested that Alec's financial troubles were a motive for murdering Maggie and Paul, the defense claims that the evidence does not add up. But your mind didn't go to, gosh, I bet he killed his wife and son because I asked him about the Ferris theme, right? No. The last witness called to the stand on Tuesday was SLED forensic scientist Megan Fletcher. Wednesday will begin with the defense cross-examining Fletcher. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. He was more distant. Even when he was in the office, he was absent. He was rarely there. And when he was, the door was closed. And it was almost impossible for us to, to reach him. Uh, even in, he was always on his phone. He was always dealing with something bigger than what we had, what we had going on. Annette Griswold, a paralegal who worked under Alec Murdoch, says she grew suspicious the attorney might be misusing the law firm's money after she was unable to locate a couple of settlement checks. I kind of kept checking and going back. Eventually, I got to speak to him, and he, he was still kind of on the phone, but he was like, no, I didn't get those checks. And I was like, are you sure? And he said, yeah. After investigating more into the missing checks, Griswold reported the issue to the law firm's CFO. I'm still hoping this he just lost the checks, and this was all just a, a misunderstanding. But at the back of my mind, you know, there's this huge, huge red flag telling me this is not right. When the law firm partners confronted Alec with the evidence, Murdoch was forced to resign. More witnesses were called to the stand to testify until a strange announcement around 12.30 this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have to evacuate the building uh, at this time, so we'll be in recess until we discover what's going on. After a delay due to a reported bomb threat, the trial resumed in the afternoon with testimony from an FBI electronics engineer. The state hoped to determine Alex Murdoch's movements on the night of June 7, 2021. Roughly how much time passes between the vehicle taking out of park at line 1672 and put back in the park at line 1904. Approximately 16 minutes. Court adjourned at 4.30 Wednesday afternoon and the trial will resume at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Do you recall, was there any location data uh, recovered for the day of uh, June 7th, uh, 2021. There was no location data recovered on June 7th. After Falkowski left the stand, the state called one of Alec Murdoch's closest friends to testify, attorney Chris Wilson. I considered him to be one of my best, if not my best friend. Yes, sir. You get to know his family? Very much. Not just his wife, not just Maggie, not just Paul, but, you know, Buster and his parents.
Wilson says that Alec tricked him into sending money they earned from working on a case together to his personal bank account. He told me that the partners were aware that the monies were being paid to him, that he was going to put them into annuities, and that they would be accounted for um, on the books of the firm as already having been credited as paid towards him. Did you trust him? I did. Later, Murdoch's actions would prove costly for his friend. He told me he didn't have the $192,000. So I had to put $192,000 of my own money into my trust account to hold for the fees for his firm. Wilson remembers getting a call in September from Alec's law firm telling him about the misused funds, including his own $192,000. Shocked, betrayed, mad, I mean, I don't know, numb. While cross-examining Wilson, the defense hoped to separate Alec's financial crimes from the murders of Maggie and Paul. And the reason he was distraught it was over the death of Maggie and Paul, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, yeah. And at no point in time, when you're thinking, I'm afraid he might hurt himself, you weren't thinking he had any involvement in June, July, during this period of time with the murders of Maggie and Paul. Right? Yes, sir. Before leaving the courtroom today, the two parties discussed how much longer is this trial going to take. Creighton Waters said that the state hopes to rest its case Wednesday of next week. Harpulian saying that the defense needs a week for testimony themselves, but he would try to condense it as much as possible. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. I thought the hearing didn't happen. Well, you thought wrong. There's a lot of papers, so maybe you got confused. Another witness called upon to testify this week was Alec Murdoch's mother's housekeeper, Shelly Smith. She was at Libby Murdoch's house the night of the murders when Alex says he went to visit his mother. How long did he stay in the room with y'all? I say y'all, for the record, you and Miss Libby, I apologize. About 15 to 20 minutes, 20 minutes. But he wasn't there in 30 or 40 minutes, was he? No. no. Once Judge Clifton Newman decided to allow evidence of Murdoch's alleged financial crimes to be presented to the jury, we heard from some of Alec's former co-workers. He was rarely there, and when he was, the door was closed, and it was almost impossible for us to to reach him. Uh, even in, he was always on his phone, he was always dealing with something. The CFO of the law firm Alec was a part of testified about how Murdoch stole millions of dollars from the firm by writing checks to himself. As everyone came out, I started noticing it more and more, and the sickest feeling you could feel in the world, I knew that he was stealing all this money. In the middle of the week, an odd interruption. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to evacuate the building. The trial was delayed for a couple of hours as law enforcement responded to a reported bomb threat. Once the all-clear was given, the jury returned and heard testimony about Alec Murdoch's movements on the night of the murders. Roughly how much time passes between the vehicle taking out of park at line 1672 and put back in the park at line 1904? Approximately 16 minutes. On Thursday, the state presented one of Alec's closest friends as a witness, attorney Chris Wilson. He said he had a drug addiction um, and then he admitted he had been stealing money. You know, from who? He... Um, from the law firm and from clients. However, the defense used this witness as a way to show the jury that Murdoch had no motive to kill his wife and son. At no point in time, when you're thinking, I'm afraid he might hurt himself, you weren't thinking he had any involvement in June, July, during this period of time with the murders of Maggie and Paul. Yes, sir. Friday wrapped up the week as a former housekeeper for the Murdoch family spoke about the clothes Alec was wearing on June 7, 2021. It didn't feel like he was inquiring. It felt more like he was trying to convince me of the shirt that he was wearing. Judge Clifton Newman adjourned court just before 5 on Friday, and the trial will drag into a week 4 on Monday. Reporting in Walterboro outside the Colleton County Courthouse, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Uh, We have some matters with the jury, uh, with two jurors who have tested positive for COVID. Both attorneys argued for a possible delay in the trial. I hate to use the word delay, but that's what it would be. I think we were both in agreement that we would rather, if forced to, to delay a little bit rather than end up with a mistrial and be unable to continue at all. And there could also be new evidence introduced this week at trial from Alec Murdoch's Chevy Suburban. And GM actually sent a letter with it saying, yeah, we told you back in March we didn't have anything and we just found it and here you go. Some of it is very helpful to us. Once trial began, SLED agent Rachel Wynn testified about samples taken of Alec Murdoch's clothes that were tested for blood. So the presumptive results for this stain were that it was positive for the possible presence of blood. 
confirmatory tests showed no evidence of blood on Alec Murdoch's clothes, and the defense also argued that there was no DNA evidence of Alex Murdoch on Maggie, but rather an unknown male. Were Paul and Alec Murdoch excluded as contributors? Yes. So male DNA under her fingernails, not from Paul, not from uh, Alec Murdoch? The foreign DNA to her, yes, they were excluded as contributors. The final witness to testify was Dr. Ellen Reamer, who performed the autopsies on the bodies of Maggie and Paul. In your professional expert opinion, what was the cause of death to a reasonable degree of medical certainty for Paul Murdoch? For Paul Murdoch, shotgun wounds. And what was the manner of death? Manner of death is homicide, which means death at the hands of another. Court wrapped up just before 6 o'clock today and proceedings will begin Tuesday with the defense team cross-examining Dr. Ellen Reamer. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. How do you know their entrance rather than exit on the skin? Um, well, I'll tell you. After Dr. Ellen Reamer was cross-examined by the defense, there was new evidence admitted concerning Alec Murdoch's Chevy Suburban. I did become uh, aware uh, Friday evening that uh, additional information not previously given before uh, existed. The data will be testified to later and includes GPS location for the night of June 7, 2021. The next witness called to the stand was Roger Dale Davis, a man who worked on the Murdoch's Moselle property. And did you identify the voices on that kennel video? I did. Whose voices did you hear? Paul, Maggie's, and Alex. In all the time that you spent out there in the four years, every day, twice a day, did you ever see a gun left in the feed room? No. The defense had Davis testify about how guns were left in other places on the property and also argued that Alec had no motive to kill his wife and son. I mean, you described that, them as being lovey-dovey, didn't you? Yes. And, and tell the jury what you meant by that. Um, every time I always see him, they, you know, they, I've never seen that man even raise his voice at his wife or kids um, so, um, or his wife. I've never seen him even, none of them argue. Um, but he always, anything she wanted or the boys wanted, he would try to get it. After Davis, more evidence of Alec Murdoch's alleged financial crimes was presented to the jury. The state hopes to show that Alec was facing financial pressure when the murders happened. Did Richard Alexander Murdoch have $792,000 available to return to Chris Wilson? He did not. One of the final witnesses of the day was Maggie Murdoch's sister, Marion Proctor. I asked him, I said, Alec, do you have it? Any idea who's done this? I said, we have got to find out who's done, who, who could do this. And he said that he did not know who it was, but he felt like whoever did it had thought about it for a really long time. Did that strike you as odd? I just didn't know what that meant. Court adjourned just before 5 Tuesday afternoon, and the jury has been asked to return Wednesday morning at 1030. The state is expected to rest its case tomorrow, but with additional evidence possibly being presented, it could delay this timeline. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Well, the financial um, evidence was allowed uh, on the issue of motive. Um, I believe that to allow this evidence is a bridge too far. When the jury entered the courtroom Wednesday morning, the case's lead investigator took the stand, SLED's David Owen. So we sent Colony County out, um, and they went from one end of Moselle Road to the other, uh, attempting to locate video surveillance, um, talk to neighbors, see if they heard anything, saw anything. Owen also testified to an interview from August of 2021 between law enforcement and the defendant. Any homicide investigation, you start with the closest person and or the person who found the deceased. Mm -hmm. Both cases, that's how it. Mm -hmm. Everybody stays in that investigation until we can get them out. Mm -hmm. And right now, because of the questions that I have that I need explanations for, I cannot get Alec out. Okay. Investigators say that Alec's timeline of events from the night of the murders did not make sense to them. How long would you say you were at your mom's? 45 minutes an hour. At moments, Alec appeared quite emotional. Did either one of them live after they were shot the first time? Is this one person, two persons, three persons? But the interview quickly switched back to an interrogation. Did you kill Maggie? No. Did I kill my wife? Yes, sir. No, David. Do you know who did? No, I do not know who did. Did you kill Paul? No, I did not kill Paul. 
Before court adjourned Wednesday afternoon, Judge Newman reversed his earlier decision and will allow information about the roadside shooting from September 2021 to be included as evidence. The trial will resume tomorrow morning at 930. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. A hearing outside the presence of the jury addressed the issue, uh, made, made it clear that the roadside shooting uh, was a bridge too far. Then the defense decided to uh, build a road over that bridge. Once the jury entered the courtroom, the state presented crime scene expert Kenneth Kinsey as a witness. He testified about how Maggie and Paul were shot. That's, that's over 20-something entrances and exits. I believe it would have hurt him. I believe he would have been in pain. And I believe he would have been somewhat affected. And the reason I believe that is because I've got the 90-degree blood drops moving really, really slow. If he wasn't feeling it or if it hadn't affected him in some way, I believe his youthfulness would have allowed him to get out of there faster. The defense asked Kinsey about their own theories during cross-examination. It could have been, it could have been here. Okay. It could have been here. I mean, I, I can't take but, the but mechanics. Holding, whoever, whoever is shooting him in the chest is holding it. Parallel to the ground or near, ground. near parallel to the ground? Yes, sir. And we know it wasn't down here. I don't believe so. No, sir. Not the path of the bullets going out the back one. Okay. In the afternoon, SLED Special Agent Ryan Kelly took the stand. He responded to a September 2021 shooting involving the defendant, something investigators later said was an alleged suicide attempt. He said the similar story that he was driving along Old, old Sakahatchee, um, that he hit something significant with his tire, causing it to go flat. So when he pulled over to the side of the road to inspect the tire, it was flat. Um, as he was doing that, uh, uh, he said a dark in color Chevy pickup truck drove by, uh, passed him, turned around, and came back to his location. He said he uh, made contact with the driver, and as uh, Mr. Murdoch turned around to walk back to his vehicle, he said the driver then shot him. Court adjourned a little early Thursday evening, but the state is still expected to rest its case Friday. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Objection is sustained. That's not relevant. Yes. The argument uh, to the jury. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Yes. While cross-examining SLED agent Ryan Kelly, defense attorney Dick Harputlian showed signs of frustration with the witness. Those medical records the doctors no, would not... That's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you if you talked to a doctor and said, is he competent to talk to us? Did you do that? Mr. Harputlian... Uh, would you just say yes or no and we can move on? After Kelly left the stand, the state presented new evidence obtained from General Motors about Alex Murdoch's Chevy Suburban from the night of June 7, 2021. The data we got back from OnStar is mostly a lot of latitude and longitude and um, speed and different kind of codes and whatnot. The recently obtained data shows what time Alex's vehicle arrived and left various locations on the night of the murders. This is going to reflect at um, Alex arriving home at 642.54 with a miles per hour of zero. It's shown at 907.06. Um, the Suburban is leaving 4147 Moselle Road. While location data places Alec at the Moselle property when the state claims the murders happened, the defendant says he was never down at the kennels. The state has tried to prove his story wrong using a cell phone video. And then at 844.55, what does it reflect on Paul's phone? This is when this video was um, extracted and created through Paul's phone, which shows Alex, Maggie, and, well, you can hear Alex, Maggie, and Paul in the background. That's the kennel video at that's 844. A, that's the kennel video that's been in previous testimony, correct? But what is certain is when Alec made the 911 call. What time is the 911 call? 10.06.14. How many seconds of that from the time the, the Suburban arrives at the kennels and he calls 911? Roughly 20 seconds. After the state rested its case, the defense presented two witnesses before court adjourned for the week. The trial will resume Tuesday morning. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. First, we have a juror who is not feeling well and who... Uh, is at a doctor's appointment. The juror was replaced, and the trial is now down to two alternate jurors. Judge Clifton Newman also reprimanded defense attorney Jim Griffin for a post he made on social media. All I did was retweet an article that was published in the Washington Post. I didn't put any comment. I didn't make any statement. Once the jury was brought in, the defense called Alec Murdoch's son, Buster, to the stand. I spoke to my mom every day multiple times a day and the like for my dad and and for my brother too. 
Buster says that the boat wreck that Paul was involved in impacted the Murdoch family, especially Maggie. She quit going to the to the grocery stores in Hampton, quit going to the pharmacy, quit going to get food in Hampton, just thought that there was a, a real kind of a bad vibe in Hampton like you go. She right. felt like people were staring at her and talking about her and stuff. However, Buster testified that his family stayed close despite its problems. The weekend before the murders, Buster went to South Carolina baseball games with his parents. What days of that weekend did you go to the game? Saturday and Sunday. Did your mom and dad stay in Columbia that weekend? They did. A little more than 24 hours after watching baseball with his parents, Buster got a call from his father that his mother and brother were dead. I, I kind of just sat there for a minute and I was, I was in shock. Buster recalled first seeing his dad after Maggie and Paul's deaths. Destroyed. He was heartbroken. I walked in the door and saw him and um, gave him a hug and just, just broke it down. In the afternoon, the defense called forensic engineer Mike Sutton to testify. He believes that whoever shot Maggie Murdoch was between 5'2 and 5'4 in height. And we know that um, Alec was 6'4. Yes. So could you say to a degree of engineering certainty, more probably than not, that Alec Murdoch on the night of June 7th did not fire that, fire that shot into the quail pen? In my opinion, it's, it's very unlikely that he fired that shot. Court adjourned around 5.30 Tuesday evening and will resume Wednesday morning at 9.30. The defense has a goal of resting its case by Friday. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. Listen, when, when September the 2nd hit, it changed everything that I knew about Alec. In September of 2021, the PMPED law firm that Ball and the defendant worked for fired Alec Murdoch after he admitted to stealing money from the company and its clients. But you have just testified that you didn't really know this man, did you? Obviously, I did not. I mean, had, had we known the things he was doing, we wouldn't have been law partners. But in the days following Maggie and Paul's murders, Ball was still close with Alec. He remembers the defendant telling him what he did on the night of June 7, 2021. He said that he ate dinner, laid down on the couch, took a nap, and then left to check on him. And now you know that's not true from seeing the kennel video, right? I do. After Ball stepped down, the defense called the attorney representing Alec in the boat case to the stand. So was it your understanding the court was ordering Alex to produce all of the financial information no. requested? No, that's not what it said. The state has said that the defendant's financial issues were a motive for killing Maggie and Paul. Attorney Creighton Waters believes Murdoch's financial problems were close to being exposed when the murders happened. Once that order gets issued, that's going to set in motion a train that's going to have to come to a conclusion in a court of law. The defense's third witness of the day was a forensic expert who questioned the way the crime scene was processed. And if you had used a sheet or any other material, would you, once you've done using it, would you discard it or would you save it and have it analyzed and why? It should be preserved and it should go over the remains. And you're basically second guessing the Colleton County Sheriff's Department, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Well, you're being paid to come in and say they did a bad job, aren't you? depending on the limitations of their skill sets, depending on the limitations of equipment that they have in their training, they may have done the best job they could. Court adjourned around 5.15 this evening and will resume tomorrow morning at 9.30. Reporting in Walterboro outside the Colleton County Courthouse, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. I'm Alec Murdoch, M-U-R-D-A-U-G-H. Good morning. Attorney Jim Griffin's first question was a direct confrontation. Mr. Griffin, I didn't shoot my wife or my son any time, ever. However, the former Low Country attorney did admit to lying to investigators about his location on the night of the murders. Did you tell Agent Owen and Agent Craw, did you lie to them t by telling them that you were not down at the kennels on that night? Yes. The defendant maintains that he was not at the kennels at the time of the murders. Alex says he went to visit his mother in Hampton County and tried multiple times to get in contact with Maggie while gone. It's not unusual to not be able to get somebody all the time when they're at the house or they're it's on the property. I mean, you've heard all the testimony about how spotty cell service was. So, no, at the time, it didn't strike me as anything unusual. That night, Murdoch's 911 call came shortly after 10, after he said he discovered his wife and son's bodies. Did you drive down to the kennels in your suburban? I did. And what'd you see? 
saw what y'all have seen pictures of. The defendant says he urged investigators to obtain certain information that he believes would prove him innocent. Every time that I talked to David Owens, I would ask him about getting OnStar data and GPS data. There's no question in there that it would demonstrate that I couldn't have done this. And on the 911 call from June 7, 2021, Murdoch stated his theory for who could have killed Maggie and Paul. I said, Paul, Paul, I should have known. I was referring to Paul, Paul got so many threats, didn't take serious. After questioning, Alec Murdoch was cross-examined by prosecuting attorney Creighton Waters. I stole money that didn't belong to me. I misled Arthur Badger to take that money, and I was wrong. How many times have you practiced that answer before your testimony today? Because I've keep never the same one over and over again. I've never practiced that answer, but okay. you keep asking me these questions, and I, I keep using that answer. Creighton Waters continued to cross-examine the defendant until Judge Clifton Newman adjourned court around 5.30. The trial will resume tomorrow morning at 9.30. Reporting in Walterboro outside the Colleton County Courthouse, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. I took money from my clients. We, we've gone through that. And well, I think, but you well, keep asking that. me I'm about asking that. I'm asking you if, it, if, if, you're, if you're... After financial crimes, Waters asked about the defendant's alleged opioid addiction. And you talked about withdrawals, just how strong they are, how you're willing to do anything to make them stop, correct? I think what I said is almost anything. Almost anything. Waters confronted Murdoch with cell phone data showing almost 300 steps recorded shortly after the state says the murders occurred. I know what I wasn't doing, Mr. Waters, and what I wasn't doing is doing anything uh, as I believe you've implied that I was cleaning off or washing off or washing off guns, or putting guns in a raincoat, and I can promise you that I wasn't doing any of that. Friday, Murdoch restated his theory for why someone would have wanted to kill Maggie or Paul. I didn't believe that any of the families, the people that were involved in the boat wreck, had anything to do with hurting Maggie and Paul. Okay. But I can tell you that at that time, and as I sit here today, that I believe that boat wreck is the reason why Paul, Paul, and Maggie were killed. Waters stated that this theory was unlikely and focused many questions on why the defendant lied to investigators about not being at the kennels on the night of the murders. Alex says he was feeling paranoid because of the drugs in his system and in his pocket. It, it didn't go away in a matter of seconds. And I decided to lie. Everything about me not going to the kennel was a lie. And you're able to just do that Mag so easily and so convincingly and so naturally, don't you? I mean, that's not for me to judge. That's true. Murdoch left the stand and court adjourned just before 5 Friday evening. Dick Carpootlian says the defense has four more witnesses to testify on Monday when the trial resumes. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. I mean, you just can't really appreciate the spatial issues um, without actually seeing them. I've never heard of any, any such thing. Uh, generally, jury views are at the request of a party. and uh, I'm requesting. Upon request of either side, the court will um, allow a jury view. But before that, the defense still had three witnesses to call up. Some of the crime scene experts that testified for the defense disagreed with the testimony from the crime scene experts presented by the state. To me, this is a contact range gun, uh, shotgun wound to the top of the head. I think within a day, I called back to uh, Attorney Harpool and, and yourself and said, uh, this doesn't look right to me. It's inconsistent with my interpretation of the results. The crime scene analyst also disagreed with the state's theory that the defendant acted alone. Uh, my opinion is the totality of the evidence is more suggestive of a two-shooter scenario. Why would one shooter bring two long rifles, two long weapons, to the event. You can't handle and shoot two of them. The defense's third witness of the day was Alec Murdoch's brother, John Marvin. Excuse me, I'm having a hard time talking about Paul because we had a very special relationship. John Marvin testified that Alec was close with both of his sons and his wife, Maggie. You know, it was a great relationship. I mean, I, all marriages, I'm sure, have, have hiccups here and there, but I'm telling you, it was a good marriage. John Marvin also stated that no law enforcement asked to search their mother's house in Almeida. I would have given them consent and I would have taken them over there just like I did at Ellick's house and I would have helped 
uh, facilitate the search to show them areas that they may not know about. The defense rested its case this afternoon before court adjourned. Attorney Creighton Waters said that the state has three to four more witnesses to present as part of its reply case. The trial will resume tomorrow morning at 930. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. This was an estimate three week trial. We're now in week six. This will go into week seven. It seems to me the state's position is let no dead horse go unbeaten. This has got to stop. But it was the state's first rebuttal witness who seemed the most frustrated Tuesday morning. I have been very, very angry about it because of what he's done. And he did it in a very callous way, a very deceitful way. I was there. I saw things that hadn't even been talked about in this courtroom. I was there. I, I, I love Paul very much. I thought I knew who Alec was. The state also presented experts whose expertise was questioned by the defense. I determined that when the phone is thrown more like a Frisbee, nine out of ten times, the screen does not turn on. Did you measure any of these forces? I did not. You just threw the phone around in your office? <laughs> Absolutely. So you didn't record what you were doing, and you did not measure any data? One of the state's final rebuttal witnesses was another one of the defendant's former law partners, Mark Ball. How you doing today? Be doing better if I wasn't here. I hear you. Ball testified that he knew Alec Murdoch for 34 years. Knowing what you know now, was he able to look you in the eye and lie convincingly and effortlessly to you? It's pretty obvious. Uh, I didn't know the, the stealing. I didn't know any of that. The final witness of the day was crime scene expert Dr. Kenneth Kinsey. Is it your expert opinion that a six foot four shooter cannot be excluded from the murder of Maggie and Paul? I see nothing that could exclude a six foot four shooter. The state rested its reply case and court adjourned around 530 this evening. The jury trip out to the Moselle property will take place tomorrow morning before closing arguments in the afternoon. Reporting in Walterboro outside the Colleton County Courthouse, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. It is a different story like has never been seen before, but the reason is, is that he is a different man than the kind of stories that we've seen before. Waters and the state prosecution have built their case around the theory that the defendant murdered his wife and son because of financial pressure. The boat case hearing goes away and everyone immediately rallies around Alec Murdoch and it worked. Throughout the trial, the state has pointed to examples of Alec Murdoch's deception, including his alleged financial crimes and failed suicide attempt. Within a day of September 3rd of him being forced to resign, the side of the road happens. And Alec is a victim again. Waters has also highlighted lies the defendant has told to law enforcement, including when Alec told investigators that he was not at the crime scene minutes before the murders. Brogan Gibson asked me if I was up there. He said he thought it was me. Was it you? At, at 9 o'clock? Yes. No, sir. When investigators unlocked Paul Murdoch's phone, they found a video that proved otherwise, something Alec eventually admitted to during trial. Exposing the defendant's lies about the most important thing he could have told law enforcement. When was the last time I saw my wife and child alive? Why in the world would an innocent, reasonable father and husband lie about that and lie about it so early? Finally, Waters attempted to poke holes in the defense's theories for how Maggie and Paul were killed. They're coming to you with absolutes to try to make you consider that there's the possibility that a crime scene can definitively establish whether there's one or two shooters or whether or not they're of a certain height, and that's just not how it works. And you heard that from Dr. Kinsey. That's not how it works. Waters finished his closing argument and court adjourned just before 5 this afternoon. The defense will present its closing argument tomorrow morning at 930 before the jury retires to deliberate. Reporting in Walterboro, Alex Sahada, ABC Columbia News. The call on the field is that Alec Murdoch is innocent, innocent of these charges. That's what the law requires. And that unless and until the state proves his guilt to each one of you individually, voting individually, proves his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, then that presumption of innocence stays with him. In his closing argument, defense attorney Jim Griffin criticized the investigation into Maggie and Paul's murders. 
we believe that we've shown conclusively that SLED failed miserably in investigating this case. Griffin also told the jury that Alec had no motive to kill his wife or son, using witness testimony to back that up. He, he adored her. He, he loved her. He adored her. The defense attorney admitted that his client lied to investigators about not being at the kennels on the night of the murders, but says this is just circumstantial evidence. On behalf of Alex, on behalf of Buster, on behalf of Maggie, and on behalf of my friend Paul, I respectfully request that you do not compound a family tragedy with another. Thank you. The last word went to the state as John Metters presented the prosecution's final argument. We don't have to prove motive. I think it's been proven. His world was collapsing. Metters says that Alex alibi, the trip to his mother's house in Almeida, was a cover up. We submit to you that's when he went to hide the guns. It's common sense. And the state's explanation throughout the trial has been that Alec killed Maggie and Paul because of financial pressure. I think he loved Maggie. I think he loved Paul. But you know who he loved more than that? You know who he loved more than that? And who he's going to make sure that that life, wanted to make sure that life, he loved Alex. After all the lawyer's statements, the jury then retired to deliberate. And three hours later, a verdict. The state versus Richard Alexander Murdoch defendant, indictment for murder, SC code 16-3-0010, CDR code 0116, okay. guilty verdict, signed by the four lady, 3223. Alec Murdoch was found guilty of all charges. His sentencing will take place tomorrow morning at 930. He faces the possibility of life in prison without parole. Reporting in Walterboro outside the Colleton County Courthouse, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News. No one who thought they were close to this man knew who he really was. And, Your Honor, that's chilling. A man like that, a man like this man, should never be allowed to be among free law-abiding citizens again. Attorney Creighton Waters asked Judge Clifton Newman to sentence Murdoch to two life sentences in prison. The judge addressed Murdoch before giving out the sentence. And I know you have to see Paul and Maggie during the night times when you're attempting to go to sleep. I'm sure they come and visit you. I'm sure. All day and every night. Yeah, I'm sure. Judge Newman sentenced Murdoch to two life sentences in prison to be served consecutively. And I tell you again, I respect this court, but I'm innocent. I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my wife Maggie, and I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my son Paul Paul. You can convince yourself about it, but obviously you have the inability to convince anyone else about that. Chief of SLED Mark Keel addressed the media after Murdoch was let out of the courtroom by law enforcement. I want to make one thing clear to everybody. There are no winners today. The defense continued to argue that SLED conducted a poor investigation into Maggie and Paul's murders. Fingerprints, footprints, and all kinds of forensic things that weren't done. Defense attorneys were also critical of the information allowed as evidence during the trial and are planning an appeal. We think the appellate courts will take a strong look at that. We feel um, like that is a very solid ground for an appeal, and we're going to pursue that. If we lose at the state courts, we'll have success at the federal court. So why were Maggie and Paul Murdoch killed on the night of June 7th, 2021? Perhaps Alec Murdoch is the only one who possibly knows that answer. Reporting in Colleton County, Alex Tejada, ABC Columbia News.